we're in phase two of the emergency spillway. Um, right now we're about elevation 824, and this, um, this portion of the spillway is going to go up to elevation 878. Uh, what we have behind us is 770 dumping 22 and a half cubic yards of RCC, uh, the uh, emergency spillway uh, apron. So we're building one-to-one -one steps uh, up this apron. What's unique about what we're doing here and, and the way we're constructing it compared to most RCC jobs is the way that we're finishing these steps that dissipate the water as it comes off the, uh, the monolith of the emergency spillway. The excavator is using GPS to find the grade, uh, the top and bottom of, of each one-to-one, -one, and then we've fabricated a special plate on another 314 to act as a trowel uh, to give us this, this finish. Uh, behind us is the training berm, and that's constructed uh, as we come up. It's 16 feet above the apron. When we get to the top of the monolith, uh, the training berm is going to extend 35 feet above the apron on the inside and it'll be 46 feet above on the outside, tying all the way up into the control structure. So we're standing in the upper chute of the spillway at this time. The uh, concrete pours are under full peak production right now. We get anywhere from 8 to 10 placements uh, shift. Most everything is placed at night. We'll do a couple walls during the day. Up here in the upper chute, we have about 40 walls remaining and about 60 slabs remaining uh, as of tonight. So all of this concrete is going to be placed by November 1st and then we'll finish up with the concrete sealant of the dry finish and finish up all the drainage line systems that are behind the walls and the, then the final thing will be the wall backfill. You can see where we've removed 16 inches of concrete off all the surfaces, the sides, the top, and the slabs of the, of the dentates. And now we're in the process of replacing the concrete with erosion resistant concrete. The slabs are completed. Uh, now we're putting the rebar cage on. We'll put the form panels up and place the concrete so they'll be kind of like getting a crown on your tooth at the dentist. Pretty neat innovation here behind us is our, what we call our Frankenscreed. It's a pretty unique carrier beam that, that holds a, the bunion tube. Makes it a lot better for the crews to be able to pull 37 foot wide screed up the hill on this 25% slope. Uh, rather than trying to pull it by hand. Our batch plant here is an Erie batch plant that produces structural concrete for the Orville spillway. We have an ice plant on site that produces ice for the mix, as well as our aggregate gets chilled. So we're, we're able to produce concrete out of the plant that's under 55 degrees. So this is our ice machine. So we make four tons of ice an hour, and on an average night, we'll burn through 70 tons of ice. So right now, the aggregate's coming through, and it's going across the wet belt, which drops the temperature of the rock by 20 degrees. Then it hits the free deck screen and splits the rock into the right size um, aggregate for the plant. So this is our liquid nitrogen stand here. We're able to inject nitrogen into our mixer trucks to lower our concrete down to 40 degrees. We've got two tanks on site and it can hold up to 600 inches of liquid nitrogen, which will last us a night. So every day we get two loads of nitrogen to keep us full. When the project's over, we'll demob the plant, which is about 40 truckloads, and it'll go off to the next project. Most of the pieces are truckable. You can see there's tires on some pieces, other pieces go on flatbed trucks. Uh, but it's all mobile.